Well, hello everyone. Uh, sorry about the delay there. We just had a few technical issues to get started with. So um, welcome and greetings to our um, evening on Facebook Live where we're having a discussion about um, the Druin Warrigal bypass slash alternative routes slash heavy vehicle um, uh, alternate traffic management issues, etc. So this is a very big subject. Um, it's a bit confusing because when people think of bypass, they think of the freeway. Um, but basically, we're going to have a good discussion tonight. My name is Michael Leaney and I'm the Mayor of Borbore Shire. And I'd like to start off by acknowledging the traditional owners on the land on which we're all meeting tonight. We're very spread out, so great to have you here tonight. And I certainly acknowledge all um, of the elders, past, present and emerging, and elders of any other communities that may be here um, joining us tonight in this meeting. So greetings and welcome. So to give you a quick rundown of what we're going to be doing tonight, um, first of all, we're going to have a bit of a presentation by our Director of Community Infrastructure, Cohen Vanderveld, and he'll give us some background when we're going to some questions. We're joined by Nick Debenham tonight as well. He's from Brown Stock Feeds, and he's also, he's also from the Livestock and Rural Transports, Transporters Association of Victoria. So he's going to be able to give some um, good uh, feedback and uh, answer some questions that people have sent through in advance. You can also pop them into the chat later, into the, uh, the questions and chat later as we're going along. So what I'm gonna do now is, um, is hand over to Cohen. But just before I do that, just keep in mind that what we're doing here tonight is actually to raise awareness with you to help us to try and get um, some funding, not for us, not for Borbore Shire, this is for Regional Roads Victoria, so we can start the planning, so we can start working on getting and the traffic moving and getting better, um, I suppose, traffic outcomes and improving our communities in both Druin and Warrigal. So let's pass over to Cohen and Cohen will go through um, the presentation we have. The tonight's, um, the tonight's meeting will run for about 45 minutes and we're going to leave plenty of time for questions. So we look forward to speaking to you a little bit later. So over to you, Cohen. So thank you, Mayor Lenny. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, before I start uh, the presentation, I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners uh, on the lands on which we're attending um, the forum from tonight. And I also pay my respects to any elders past, present and emerging that might be with us um, here tonight. Um, so welcome everyone uh, from the community um, and those that have taken the time um, out of their evening to participate in the forum tonight. Um, for those that missed it earlier, my name's Cohen Vanderveld and I'm the director of community infrastructure at Borbore. I will be taking you through a short presentation this evening prior to having the opportunity to ask any questions that are relevant to the challenges we are facing as a community due to the issues relating to the current arterial roads within and around Druin and Warrigal, namely those that access the M1 Princess Highway. I'll provide um, some facts and figures um, around um, Bauble Shire um, before talking about um, some of the, the transport related issues on the arterial road network and those issues that we're facing. Um, I'll start to talk about some solutions that we need to work towards and the benefits that we would see um, from these solutions. I'd also like to cover off what council has um, and is doing and how um, you as a community might be able to help and assist. I trust many of you that are attending today have a good understanding of where Bauble is located, uh, but some of you may not necessarily be across some of the specifics around the demographic, demographic data relating to our Shire. And this is particularly being driven uh, by the growth in Drew and Warrigal. So Bauble Shire is the fastest growing peri-urban shire in the state. We attract people from across Southeast Melbourne, from across the state, um, from across the country, due to the proximity of the urban centres um, to Melbourne. Um, and also that our towns provide a pristine regional lifestyle. So this along with past housing affordability and the supply of new land through the precinct structure plans in Joona Warrigal, we've seen 
significant amount of growth. Uh, and so between the last uh, two census periods, um, we've seen 27% growth in drawn and 11% growth in Warrigal. Given this trend, we're expecting uh, that in these towns, there'll be another 20,000 homes and the population will effectively double by 2041. Borbor is known for manufacturing major agribusiness and innovative food processing companies, which service the Australian market, but also service the globe. In addition to this, we have a number of other sectors which are reliant on a modern fit for purpose arterial road network. This includes retail, the retail sector, construction, mining, emergency services, just to name a few. Effectively, our arterial roads are essential to this network that supports the supply chain to enable these industries. But the key issue here is that the current layout of the arterial roads within Drewin and Warrigal was, was effectively laid out over 100 years ago. And that was a time where the movement of freight and people was moved by horse and cart. So today, we've got this same network of arterial roads, but we're experiencing tens of thousands of people moving in motor vehicles. The movement of freight is being moved in huge quantities by heavy vehicles and also B doubles. This is an ineff inefficient tra um, a traffic network with inefficient traffic routes. And this is exacerbated by the centralized na nature of key points of interest and traffic generators, such as our central business district, um, in these two towns, schools, uh, as, as well as a few um, other things. We're seeing that there's limited commercial investment in town centres as a consequence of this conflict between um, the retail and commercial centres and the movement of freight. And these arterial roads, so the road, roads like Princess Way, Main South Road, Victoria Street, that come straight into the heart of the CBD areas, they're not designed to cater for the volumes of traffic that we're experiencing today. And importantly to know is that volumes could triple um, over the next 15 years um, on parts of Princess Way between the two towns. The conflict between pedestrians, passenger vehicle needs, um, the freight task um, is gonna continue to present significant safety issues in these towns. So council is currently advocating to the state government to provide the required $3 million of funding in the upcoming state budget. So Regional Roads Victoria, an arm of the Department of Transport, can develop a comprehensive traffic and transport plan for Drewin and Warrigal to enable a fit for purpose arterial network and appropriate transport routes. In the absence of such a plan by the state government, we think that the following options need to be considered to address the issues of traffic and the movement of people and freight. This solution could include heavy vehicle alternate routes or bypasses um, to the west and or east of Druin to improve the north-south movement of freight and um, passenger vehicles from the south of Borbore Shire, South Gippsland and the Bass Coast to this part of the M1. We need to see a duplication of Princess Way. Princess Way being the main um, road between the two towns, moving people um, from their homes and to their places of work. We need to see improved intersection upgrades, namely at War the Warrigal off ramps, at the Howard Street, Burke Street intersection in Warrigal, and the Princess Way and Wellwood Road or the Long Warrior Road um, intersection at Drawn. And we need to see the extension of Dollarburn Road from the north of Warrigal connecting to an improved interchange at Princess Highway uh, at Bullumbullan Road. So what would the benefits be? With the integrated transport plan in place by the state government, this would help guide investment. Uh, so we could see the necessary projects that would realise these benefits. This would ensure that we have an efficient traffic network, which deals with the issues of congestion, helps with the movement of freight between the towns and also the movement of people. 
Some of the benefits would be we'd see 3,500 fewer vehicles per day, including heavy vehicles driving through the Druin CBD area, 1,300 fewer vehicles through the Warrigal CBD. We'd see reduced travel times. An example of this is Princess Way in Druin. We'd see a reduction in travel times on average by one and a half minutes, but up to 10 minutes during peak times. And this is potentially only going to get worse. This means that if these projects are realised, that there would be less wait time on Princess Way, Main South Road, Druin, less wait time um, at Howard Street and Burke Street, Warrigal, less wait time on Victoria Street and, um, and Princess Way in Warrigal. And quicker trips means less downtime in traffic. So what have we been doing? We've been actively engaging with a range of government departments, as well as a number of MP, MPs and ministers, advocating to them to secure this planning money. This has also included our membership in collective advocacy groups, such as the Southeast Australian Transport Strategy, or SEATS, One Gippsland, and the Perry Urban Group of Councils. Um, We've been engaging with a range of business and industry, group, industry groups with a view to gain their support for our advocacy. And we've been promoting this matter through the media and with community to help raise th um, this issue with local members and the relevant ministers in the lead up to the state government budget in May this year. So I'll now hand back to you, Mayor Leaney to start to field some questions. Thank you, Cohen. All right. I'm assuming people can, thank you, Cohen. Um, hopefully everyone can see me. Yes, I look like I'm back on screen. So we, we requested that people send through some questions in advance and please uh, uh, pop some further questions down as we're going along. We'll try to get to them as best we can. So the first question I'm just going to run through um, is one from um, from uh, Beverly that sent in, and uh, she says um, there is a Warragul Druin bypass. It's called the freeway. Um, do you really think truckies would use the highway if their job didn't require them to deliver or pick up um, from local products? Now, in discussions with local businesses and industry, they've really indicated that something would be welcome in order to um, clear the traffic within both Druin and Warrigal. It would save them both time and money for their business, who's those businesses who are actually forced to travel through town centres to get to and from the freeway. Um, it would make the town centres safer. It would make them more welcome for, welcoming for pedestrians and for shoppers. And it's more attractive for our potential visitors to the town. Um, as Cohen said, our existing arterial network, which is owned by Regional Roads Victoria slash Vic Roads, it's not owned by council, um, is nearly 100 years old, over 100 years old, and it was not designed for the safe traffic of heavy vehicles. And as we know, there's more heavy vehicles on the road and the heavy vehicles are getting bigger. So um, thank you, Beverly, for that question. Um, Mick Debenham is from, um, uh, from the Livestock Transporters Association. Did you want to add anything to that question at all about why it's important for trucks to actually be able to access and egress the towns easily. Yeah, thanks, Councillor. Um, you're exactly right. Um, trucks, you know, normally would always use, you know, the easiest or simplest route for them. But the reality is that um, trucks do need to enter the towns. Um, some might only need to enter one place. Some might need to enter the town because that's the only route that's available to them to to um, get from one side of the town to the other. Um, but yeah, th there needs to be something that's um, looked at to try and address how trucks do that because traditionally in both of these towns, there's been, um, I guess, what's thought to be solutions by putting roadblocks in the way of trucks to try and force them to use alternate routes. But um, as I said, it doesn't always take into consideration that quite often those trucks do actually need to get into those locations. Thanks, Nick. Another question here from Catherine. Um, she asked, how much difference would it make to divert trucks? Which is kind of back to you in some ways, Mick. But I'll just say that uh, while um, diverting heavy vehicles is one benefit, there is also um, a lot about this making it easier for residential traffic, 
for those school runs that we know people get caught up in, especially in Druin, um, and to travel across town without being forced to go through the few choke points. A good example is what happens in Druin. One of the biggest challenges with Druin is that there is one railway crossing um, in the centre of town, which makes, apart from Viaduct, uh, 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 Viaduct Road there, um, uh, the bridge crossing is the only way to get across the, the railway line. So as a consequence, everyone has to be funneled through the centre of town. So removing these choke points is really important in developing these alternate routes. Um, a driver trying to get from um, the freeway to Druin South has no choice but to actually travel through the centre of the township, which isn't any good for our CBD. So it's just a good example of, of why trucks if they had a choice, would avoid it. And if we were residences, we would have the ability to avoid it as well. We wouldn't go through those central areas, especially when we're doing our school runs, as we know it's become so difficult. Another question um, from Brett here is, is it infrastructure and planning in our towns the council's job? Uh, now, all of a sudden, the, it's the state's government, the state government. I understand that getting funding, et cetera, but you're making it sound like they have to do it. Good luck with that. <laughs> Thanks, Brett. Um, well, these are our arterial roads actually owned and operated by Regional Roads Victoria slash Vic Roads. A lot of people will, will understand Vic Roads as opposed to Regional Roads Victoria. And they're responsible for um, the infrastructure, that infrastructure and for planning um, of those roads. Now, it's spread across the three levels of government, federal, state, and, uh, and local, but we, the RTL road network, which is the main roads that run through Druin and Warrigal, is their responsibility. And so therefore, they're the ones that actually have to do the planning. Now, we are advocating on behalf of Regional Roads Victoria so that $3 million is allocated in the state budget to them. It's not coming to the Bulbul Shire, it's coming, in, we want it to go to Regional Roads Victoria so they can develop um, the, uh, uh, the road network that we need. Now, it's not going to be built tomorrow. I need to point that out straight away, that if one of plans, these are, this is the planning, and we're trying to get in front before we have, instead of having 10, 15 minute delays, before we get to 30, 45 minute delays. We need to get this work done now so we can actually start developing the plans to build it. Cohen showed on the screen, um, uh, uh, showed on the screen a bit earlier, a plan and a map, I should point out to everyone that that's just indicative. Um, those maps on the map, it's not where the roads are gonna go as such, it's just to give you an indicator of where potential roads could go um, uh, throughout the, uh, the region. Cohen, did you wanna add anything to that one about potential plans into the future? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Lini. Um, yeah, look, I, I've noticed that there's a number of questions that are coming through, um, specifically wanting to understand um, some of the detail around, you know, what would, the future arterial network look like um, for Druin and Warrigal. And that's an important point is that we all have a lot of questions. And in the absence of having a plan um, that's been developed, a comprehensive plan that uses um, traffic data and effective traffic modeling, um, we really don't know what that arterial network needs to look like in the future. And so the first step in this whole process really is around getting this $3 million worth of planning money um, secured by the state government. So Regional Roads Victoria can do their job in terms of developing this plan. And so that could include um, bypasses. It could include uh, other, other aspects to try to alleviate the current congestion and also the congestion that we're expecting to see into the future as well. Um, it could include other ways to address the traffic issues like more integrated um, uh, alternate modes of transport like um, scooters, bicycles um, and things like that by providing you know, better pathway infrastructure as a way to get um, traffic off the roads as well. Thanks, Cohen. Yeah, this is more than just the word bypass or heavy vehicle alternate routes, etc. This is a whole um, planning stage that we need to go through to actually come up with an integrated and long-term vision so we can ensure that the traffic is flowing freely, but also people are able to get to where they want to be with the minimum of fuss. Question uh, from Leslie here um, saying, uh, stop the damn developments, uh, stop blaming government roads. Um, the fact you constantly give the green light to developments 
it, um, where huge swathes of farmland is cut up into minuscule blocks um, to shove as many houses as possible, blah, 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 it goes on. I'm just going to stop and explain a little bit about the thing called the precinct structure plans. So back in about 2010, between 2010 and 2014, um, an organisation, a state government organisation called the Victorian Planning Authority developed the precinct structure plans for Druin and Warrigal. Now, Druin and Warrigal were the first cabs off the rank in terms of this structure. This has now been rolled out in Wonfaggy. It's been put into places like um, uh, Bacchus Marsh, um, in Whittlesey Shire, et cetera. So these are these kind of peri-urban locations where growth was going to happen. And the whole idea with this um, by the state government, and this was dictated by the state government back in the day, they said that we are going to condense where the growth is going to be to ensure that we don't consume more farmland. Because otherwise what was happening is it was just endless um, uh, building going on. And the problem was it was consuming larger amounts of farmland. And they brought in rules like 40 hectare rules for when you're in farm zone, et cetera in terms of can't build, et cetera. And so the precinct structure plans um, were set in place for Druin and Warrigal. So this is, just so everyone is really clear on this, this was a state government initiative that the, um, uh, that the was, was put onto the, the Borbore Shire. Now, importantly, what that means is that within the, Bor within the precinct structure um, plan areas, it means that um, there is a, basically an automatic approval of the um, the developments that go into that area, as long as they comply with the rules that are set down within the precinct structure plan. They don't have to um, apply individually for planning permits and they don't have to apply for rezoning because that was all done by the state well, 12 years ago. So this has actually been happening a long time ago. And what we're seeing now, of course, with COVID, we're seeing an acceleration of people wanting to move into areas such as Druin and Warrigal um, uh, to um, because people house prices, people like the area, etc. And so we've seen a bit of a boom as people are basically leaving Melbourne. Now, importantly, so everyone knows, just to explain what this background so people know, um, with the precinct structure plan at the time, there was some very basic planning done. Now, that's why we need more planning done for this now for our arterial road networks. It's a bit chicken and egg, unfortunately, in that how the development contribution plans, which were the contributions by the actual developers um, towards the road infrastructure, like roundabouts, this was done, is that basically that money is made available when the development is completed. So that's a real challenge for us going forward of actually being able to deliver these um, uh, key infrastructure that's required for people who are living here now, but also with the plans that we're asking for to be done by Regional Vict Roads Victoria is to make sure that we've actually got proper planning done so that we can actually get the arterial road network right. Mick or Cohen, did you want to add to that at all? Yeah, I'm happy to, to, um, to talk to that as well. And, and I think back in uh, uh, between 2010 and 2014, uh, Mayor Leaney, um, importantly, uh, Regional Roads Victoria or the then Vic Roads um, probably did not have a greater a great appreciation for um, what the impact of the development of these precinct structure plans um, would look like. Um, and I think that there was a lack of um, foresight and planning at that stage by the state government in terms of what the um, growth um, and demand um, in our area um, of Druin and, and Warrigal um, off the back of those P PSPs would have from a traffic perspective. And unfortunately, um, yeah, Regional Roads Victoria or the then Vic Roads, um, you know, did not factor in um, the necessary planning uh, um, that we're advocating for now. Mm. Thanks, Colin. Um, I, I think an important element is that people are very quick to say this is, you know, council has stuffed this up, et cetera. Um, but we, are, we were dealt the hand by a, a, hand, a pack of cards and we were dealt a hand by the state government some 12 years ago and we're now in the position that we are actually getting trying to get in front of the game to actually ensure that we don't have the situation where you know what is inconveniences of 10 15 20 minutes today blows out to 45 minutes down the track 
we understand there's a problem and that's why we're trying to get the money to do this planning done. I can't stress that enough and we really need your support. A question here um, from Joe I'll just throw to is, are there plans for an exit, for an on and exit ramp um, to the M1 at Bull and Bullen Road? Um, both of the ones that are there already, not in use, and the two that are not constructed. So basically, this is for um, the, the, I suppose, the Melbourne inbound lanes and the Melbourne outbound lanes. Yes, there already is a, um, a, a, a ramp there um, that people will know they're driven past. Um, we would hope that part of the planning would mean that these ramps would actually be open up to general traffic. I understand that the reason why the ramp is there is due to um, extremely heavy loads that are carried from um, the Trobe Valley, like big uh, generating sets, et cetera. So it, it, there is a weight limit on that particular bridge. Um, that's why it's there and why it's not open um, to the general public. However, um, yes, we would hope it would be included and uh, it would certainly make a huge difference to access and egress uh, to the, from the freeway or to the freeway um, from uh, Druin. Let's have a look what other, it's in some variety. Lots of people asking very similar kind of questions. Felicity, is there an ETA for funding and timing the completion of the various stages? Well, the ETA for the funding, we would be really hopeful that we would, that, that we would be successful in getting the, the money for Regional Roads Victoria in this upcoming budget in the next few weeks. So $3 million to them. But I, to be honest, there's no ETA on when the actual roads and actual um, infrastructure that they decide on would be actually delivered. Is there anything that can be, this is from Craig, is there anything can be done now uh, whilst we wait for, the, wait for the ultimate bypass plans to be funded and built? Cohen, did you want to um, have a chat about that one? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Leaney. Um, look, there's a, a number of things that, um, that council um, can try to do to alleviate the congestion. Um, but ultimately, the congestion that's being felt is on the arterial road network. Um, and so the ball is very much in the state government's um, court in terms of what they can do there. Um, uh, I noticed that there was a question in, in regards to um, King Parrot Boulevard um, yep. and a question around whether um, that's still considered a, a bypass. So that's the road that goes through um, uh, the estate that's um, currently under construction um, to the south of Druin. Um, and that, that road is planned to go through all the way through to um, the Balfour Road um, intersection at Princess Way. Um, that road is still um, going to be constructed as part of the development, um, but will be very much um, reliant on the pace of that development that occurs. And probably one thing to clarify is, is that um, under the precinct structure plans that were developed by the VPA, um, King Parrot Boulevard, um, whilst that will be um, a, a collector road um, for the purpose of passenger vehicles, um, it won't actually be a, uh, I suppose, a, a, an alternate route for heavy vehicles. Um, it would be inappropriate that that's used for um, heavy vehicles and B doubles because effectively it's going through um, a residential area. So even with um, the construction of um, King Parrot Boulevard, which will alleviate some of the traffic on Main South Road by providing an alternate route for passenger vehicles. Um, there still will be a need for some type of alternate route um, based on what we know um, for heavy vehicles that are moving freight um, from the south um, or the southern areas of the Shire, South Gippsland, Bass Coast through to the M1. Thanks, Cohen. Mick, did you want to add anything more about um, uh, like the, uh, um, truck movements and freight movements within um, Warrigal and Druin and some of the challenges that you would see that could be resolved by having these alternative routes for your trucks to cap travel on? Thanks, Mayor. <clears throat> yeah, it's really important that this work's done because there is, you know, um, everyone's identified the issues that are there now and they're, and they're very complex but they are substantial um, barriers to the movement of heavy vehicles and um, you know industry is just really supportive of council's moves to try and address this you know sooner rather than later um, you know obviously as, as probably a lot of people have commented it, it seems like it's a bit late but um, it's always better to be uh, late than never I say and um, it's quite encouraging for industry to see that council's really proactive in trying to do something about it but um, it is really important to get you know, stakeholder feedback from everybody to make sure that um, the plan 
actually works how it's intended to work. Um, the industry has unfortunately been party to other um, types of bypasses and alternate routes that have um, not done what the intention was despite industry trying to um, draw those concerns. So I think it's really great that uh, council is engaging with um, industry. Thanks, Mick. Look, as Mick said, and as Cohen's indicated, this is actually a really complicated issue. And that's why a lot of people have said when we said this is about by a bypass, it's not the freeway bypass, it's about getting alternative ways to get around the two towns and to link the two towns together. So for instance, the Dollarburn Road link at the north side of Warrigal, that would mean that instead of vehicles having to travel south and then through um, Princess Way and through um, the main centre of town, would be able to travel north and then cut across to the north and then onto Bullen Bullen Road and then join the freeway at that location. Now that might not happen for quite some time, but it means that we have those options available and that's why the planning really needs to be done now. Uh, Sadly, as mayor and as a councillor, I would love to say that this planning really should have been done by Vic Roads some 12 years ago, and it was just very, very broad brush. We have um, a question here in relation to the Western uh, bypass as to where that would actually go. Um, well, the reality is we don't really know. This is really um, to start the conversation to get um, the planning done by the people who need to do the planning, which is Regional Roads Victoria slash Vic Roads because ultimately it's their roads and they're the ones that will be doing the professional planning to make this happen. We really are putting these proposals to them and putting these indicative plans of where things could be done. Of course, we've had discussions with them over the years and what could happen, but really this is the actual nitty gritty of what's going to be delivered um, will come out of the plan. And it's a lot of people say, well, $3 million is a lot of money to spend on planning. Really, um, it's very, very complex what needs to happen about around both Druin and Warrigal and uh, needs a lot of work to ensure that we can actually develop, develop these, um, these different road networks that are required. Now, they're not all going to happen at once either. You know, people think that we come up with a big plan and one to five will happen all at once. Well, it won't work like that, I dare say. I dare say it'll be chipped away at, but this is where we really need the community's um, support to be able to actually um, get the money for Regional Roads Victoria. People say, why are we lobbying? It's because government departments are not in a position to lobby the government. And we need you as a community to really support us by actually telling people and telling the powers that be that you want this planning to happen so we can make sure that we don't have the problems that other areas have come about, have come into by the increased traffic flows. We understand that traffic is getting busier. School pickup times in Druin, you know, I, I know you can wait for, for 30 minutes to get across that um, uh, across the bridge there and the roundabout. Um, we don't want that to continue. We want that to be improved by having links with Balfour Road, other ways to be able to get to and from. There was a question uh, sent through us earlier about why isn't there another secondary school built in Druin? Well, a good example is there's just been a $22 million allocated to upgrade the primary school in Druin, but we would have suggested the better option would have been to build a new um, a primary school uh, down on Weebar Road in south, south of the railway line. So it meant that you didn't have force, you weren't forcing everyone to cross the bridge in the centre of town. So um, I'm conscious of time. Are there any more, and there's plenty of questions. And what we'll probably do is we'll go back into the chat and we'll try to answer these in text form because uh, you don't want to hear me rabbiting on all night. I dare say you've all got much better things to do than uh, listen to me. Um, so did you want to add anything else, Cohen, before we sum up, just watching the time? Are there any other questions that, um, oh, we've just got a message. We're going to eight because we started, we started late. So apologies. So let's look at some new, more questions here. Cohen, did you want to add anything while I'm looking for some questions? Uh, yeah, yeah, look, um, look, uh, Mayor Leaney um, mentioned um, one of the one of the um, I suppose important things um, is that a coordinated effort to advocate is really really important. Um, we've been engaging with um, with industry um, and we've had support from a number of industry associations um, to provide um, you know letters to ministers and MPs. Um, we've been speaking with the um, with the likes of the um, uh, 
the um, Victorian Transport Association, the Victorian Farmers Federa Federation, um, as well as um, as with with Mick from the um, Livestock and Rural Transport Association of Victoria, um, they're all very supportive um, of this advocacy effort to secure this three million dollars. Um, and you know, but what we do know as well is that. The voice of community holds so much weight um, politically at the state level, um, and that's why, um, with your help, um, we we think that we can get this done. Um, a real concerted effort over the next few weeks to um, lobby ministers, um, MPs, write letters, um, not only from industry, not only from council, but the community, will hold real weight in the lead up to um, the state government uh, May budget announcement. And we'll provide you with a little bit more information um, on how you might be able to help. We've got plenty of um, information on our website um, to do so. Um, and I can see that the questions keep rolling in. So um, have we got any more questions, Councillor Leamy? Yeah. So look, there's one here from Mark saying, will load limits be placed on local residential roads to restrict, divert, uh, restrict diverted heavy vehicles from built up areas? Well, yes, because um, a lot of the roads that may be for residential traffic or may say, for instance, King Parrot Boulevard that uh, um, Cohen mentioned earlier, linking in with uh, Balfour Road, that would not be suitable for B-double trucks or large, large um, semi-trailers. So that would be one that's purely for um, um, cars and uh, motorcycles, et cetera, and, 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 and small um, delivery trucks like your Coles or your Woolworths, Woolies truck. Um, so they would be able to use that, but it certainly wouldn't be for your, um, your large vehicles, even though it may provide a shorter um, route. Now, there was a question asked here, um, I saw it flip past, which was, uh, here we go, um, people um, are in town for a reason, um, they are not passing through, uh, will a bypass help? Well, at this point, people simply don't have a choice. Uh, especially in Druin, they're forced to travel through the town centre, um, whether you want to or not. So um, uh, it funnel this this funnels a great deal of traffic through the centre of town, which causes those choke points that are where congestion occurs. So just imagine if you're living in the south of Druin and you want to go north, if you had the option of going around King Power Boulevard and then linking in with Balfour Road, you'd probably take that if you were heading across the Warrigal rather than going through the centre of town and having to cross the bridge and the roundabout and then through the CBD. So it's obvious that it's horses for courses. In some ways, this is not one big solution. This is about providing a number of solutions to spread the load so that we have people going in different directions, different places, and so we're not having these people being funnelled into one intersection where you have those choke points and you have that, that congestion, which we see every day, especially at school times. And I'm sure people will understand that. Um, question here from uh, Mandy. Will there be a face-to-face -face option to come along and discuss the road structure and advocating state government? Uh, I didn't go to farm world and couldn't attend. Okay. Um, so, look, in some ways, this is the best face-to-face -face option we have because it spreads it out to everyone can join in. Um, we can get your questions. We can, we've got them in writing so we can respond. Importantly, the state budget is on the way. And so we need action on this and your assistance really caught now. You know, the more voices that are added to this, uh, to get this $3 million for Regional Roads Victoria, to assist the Shire in getting that money for them is the better. It will be the, uh, um, the, the better result we'll have. In some ways, the clock is ticking because the budget is basically being put together at the moment. And so if you can help out now, that'd be really great. And we're happy to, uh, as Cohen said, on our website, we've got um, uh, simple forms you can fill in. Um, we're gonna pop up on screen. We possibly should do that now. Um, uh, we possibly should put that up now to show people how they can actually engage. Um, we know this is a bit of effort, and but we really would appreciate you giving us a hand and you know being part of the community and actually assisting the community to try and get this resolved so we can actually get this funding for Regional Roads Victoria to get this planning done. And, and further, further to that, Mayor Leaney, um, just in regards to will the community have um, the ability to be part of the engagement process um, around what these um, future plans might look like. Um, at this stage, our advocacy effort is focused on securing the planning money. Um, following on from that, 
um, you know, if we are able to secure the planning money in this next state budget, that plan that planning work will move into a phase which is starting to develop um, options and concepts um, for what future infrastructure might look like. At that point, our advocacy as a council will be really making sure that state government departments, um, like the Department of Transport, Regional Roads Victoria, are actively engaging with our community, are actively engaging with um, our industry stakeholders to make sure that what they come up with is actually going to address the local issues that are being felt on the ground and those issues that are being felt um, by industry as well. So um, importantly, if we were able to secure the $3 million of funding, um, our effort around advocacy um, would pivot and take a different um, flavour um, once that, those plans are starting to be developed. Yeah, that's true. A question from Lisa here, where will the option from Longwari start from? Don't know. That's a simple answer. That's up to Regional Roads Victoria. They're the ones that will be putting together the plans. We're just done indicative lines on a map of a Western uh, heavy vehicle bypass but really that will come down to what Regional Roads Victoria come up with in this plan, which we hope to get the money for from them to develop. Um, is there, uh, so Mark's asked, is there state or federal money on the radar to attain funding for additional and, and widening existing Balfour Road drew an intersection that is low hanging fruit? Well, we really want to get more state and federal money into our growing areas. I mean, people, got to understand that Druin and Warrigal are one of the fastest growing areas in the state. Druin grow, grew by 27% in the last five years, Warrigal grew by 11%. It is huge residential growth and as a consequence we need all the support we can get from the federal government and the state government, not just for doing our roads for other projects we need like our um, Ball Ball Cultural and Connection Centre, new library, gallery, and uh, a community space in Warrigal. That's a $30 million project that we want to build. Shire's put in um, $10 million. We need $10 million from the state and $10 million from matching from the federal government to actually get that great project done. Getting infrastructure, whether it be roads, whether it be um, key community infrastructure like the Ball Ball Connection, um, Culture and Connection Precinct, whether it be Logan Park, Slocking Precinct, et cetera, those key infrastructure that we need for our growing community cannot be done by council alone. The reality is we do not, just simply do not have the money. We'd love, for instance, to get a new West Gippsland hospital. It's been talked about for years, but people need to remember that that's actually a state government um, and federal government are the ones that fund that. It's something we can certainly advocate for but it is well and truly beyond the remit of council. To build a new hospital is gonna cost about $600 million. When it happens, it's a lot of money. You consider that the entire budget for the Shire in one year is around, excluding grants, et cetera, our rate revenue is about $63 million. Our total revenue in terms of with grants is about $100 million. So that would take seven years if we spent money on nothing just to cover the cost of building one hospital. So this is, you know, in the grand scale of things where the federal government and the state government is really important to us. And we need to part with them, partner with them to make sure we get the funding so we can actually, um, uh, um, you know, get these, this infrastructure and these roads planned and built for you to improve your life and improve, you know, the community we live in. Let's have a look for some new questions here. Um, is the roundabout on Weebar Road going ahead, please? Well, we sincerely hope so. Um, it's well and truly planned, but there are some challenges. I should point out that back in 2014, uh, when the two, between 2010 and 2014, when the PSP was done, there was a plan for 14 roundabouts in Druin and Warrigal and uh, to, to improve intersections. And they were budgeted by Vic Roads at the time, and Cohen mentioned this earlier, um, they were budgeted for about $14 million. So roughly $1 million per roundabout. Now, of course, there's a small thing called inflation. There's a full, or small thing called um, uh, 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 changes of design, et cetera. And as traffic volumes grow, um, things like the roundabouts have had to be improved in, si in size, being increased in size. And what that means now is that basically, the new plans or the new 
estimate for actually developing those roundabouts is no longer 14 million, it's about 40 million. So we are about $30 million shy, between 40 and 45 million, we're about $30 million shy of actually being able to deliver those roundabouts. And again, this is where we need support from both the state and federal government to actually deliver these major road infrastructure needs that are required. And the, the, the roundabout at Weebar Road is a good example of that. Dean has asked, how are you going to keep, a, how are we going to keep you residents abreast of any developments, especially residents that may be directly affected by any bypasses or ulterior roads? Well, again, this is really early days. Early days to get the money for the planning so that Regional Roads Victoria can actually do the designs. So to be honest, you know, that's years away as to where that's going to happen, but there will be a whole consultation process that will be conducted by Regional Roads Victoria. We'll work in partnership with them at the Shire, but basically this is um, very high level what we're talking about at the moment. The nitty gritty of what will be delivered and where things are gonna go is gonna come down to that integrated um, transport plan that uh, we need to be developed by Regional Roads Victoria and funded by the state government. Um, if you're looking for more information, uh, if you're more information about the, uh, um, what we're doing, really simple. We're all online at the moment. Go to www.borboreshire.vic.gov slash bypass. Now, again, I've got to stress to everyone, people say, oh, but we don't need a bypass, right? It's not about a bypass. Um, it's just, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's a six letter word as opposed to alternate heavy vehicle routes or, or um, traffic management plan. Don't, don't focus on the bypass word, just focus on the fact that we need an integrated plan to develop our transport and alternative routes and, and our arterial road network, which is owned by the state around Druin and Warrigal to get our lives moving again. Cohen, did you want to add anything? Mick, would you like to add anything more? Uh, thanks, Mayor. Yeah, no, I'm just uh, really excited to be involved with this and hopefully um, everybody can get behind it and try and uh, secure the funding. Thank you. Thanks, Mick. And look, this is really important, not just for the residents, it's really important for our industry, it's really important for our agriculture, it's really important for the business community. Um, you know, this, this is helping the entire community. So if you can help us um, to help you, by making, uh, by writing a letter of support or um, uh, um, sending in an email, all of those things are really important. Making contact with our local politicians and the, the various different people who need to assist us. If you can spend just a few minutes actually um, uh, spreading the word, helping us out, it will make such a difference. Look, we've got a long journey to go on. This is not gonna be easy. It's gonna take a long time, but really, um, if we don't start, we'll never get there. So, you know, we don't have all the answers today. Um, we, we don't know what's going to happen specifically. That's up to Regional Roads Victoria. But the point is, if we don't start, we'll be looking back here in a few years' time going, why didn't we make the start? So let's all hold hands, close our eyes and step off the edge and let's make this happen so we've got our traffic moving, we've got um, uh, you know, a pleasant place to live in, in both Druin and Warrigal, you can get from one to the other really easy. And um, you know, we can all grow and enjoy the fabulous community that we live in and make the most of our beautiful environment without spending too much time stuck in a car. So if there's nothing uh, that we, just to wrap up, um, we're going to close up. Cohen, any final comments before we finish off? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Lenny. Look, um, look, I trust this issue, if it isn't now already an issue for you, it's going to be an issue for all of us in the future. Um, and without a plan um, by the state government, there's no likelihood um, of funding for any projects to address this. And the situation will continue to worsen. So we really need the help of the community. As I mentioned earlier, the voice of the community holds so much weight politically. So if you can tap into your networks, if you've got contacts in higher places that can influence politically, um, if you can share information so it's known in Spring Street that this is a regionally significant issue that needs to be planned for and addressed, 
that will be so great in terms of helping us with our advocacy. If you could write a letter of support over the coming weeks to MPs and ministers, we can support you in this. We've got pre-prepared letters, um, or you can even write those yourself. Those pre-prepared letters are available on our website um, at that address there on the screen. Um, if you can cr create some noise um, in the media, on social media, share our posts through your networks, um, that will be of great assistance. So thank you. Um, and thanks also, um, Mayor Lenny, for your time tonight. No worries. Thanks, Cohen. Thanks, Mick from Brown Stock Feeds for joining us this evening. Thank you for everyone who sent through their questions. We will um, uh, try and get some typed up answers to you as well. Um, it's been really great having you online tonight. Um, please join us in this advocacy. Look, we know this is just a start and we know this is potentially a little bit confusing. Is it a bypass? Is it an alternate um, heavy vehicle truck route? Is it transport management? Doesn't matter. We just need your assistance to get us across the line to get that money for Regional Roads Victoria so we can start the planning so that we certainly have um, a, 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 a better traffic movements in both Druin and Warrigal and beyond. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you for our team behind the scenes, James and Brett, who have been, uh, um, uh, who set this up. Um, we really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone. And uh, we look forward to doing this again soon. And uh, thank you for tonight and we'll see you again. Bye-bye.